It will be the year from hell. I'm your host, Steve Van Meter, and thanks for joining me today. In today's show, I want you to understand why America's top CEOs think that 2023 will be the year from hell. Because when you look at the role of a CEO, is their job is to predict the future and anticipate needs and then structure the company through the year to meet them. So when they have a good idea of where the global economy is going and where demand's gonna be, their job gets really easy. When they don't, when, when uncertainty starts to rise, that all of a sudden they start to have big problems. Because when you think about what their role is, is to ultimately sign off. You know, what products are we gonna build? Well, how much inventory are we gonna carry? How many people people are we going to hire to do this? How long are we going to keep our factories open? Where are our factories going to be? There's so many decisions that go into this. Now, if they get it right, of course, we know the big upside benefits. That means earnings are up, profits are up, stock prices up, and so are bonuses. Get it wrong? Well, and they can quickly find themselves on the unemployment line. So as we go through and look at what they're saying, we're going to unpack this. I want you to be thinking, you know, what are their what is their outlook here? And at the end of the show, we're going to reveal what the real catalyst is for their view. Now, let's head over to CNBC where we picked today's story up. Before we do that, again, I want to thank everyone for the well wishes. You know, I, I, we're on the, the downside slope of this. We're, we're getting through it. I know my eyes are a little bit ominous. That I've done, you know, I've done my best to get that toned down. It is what it is. But again, thank you so much. Uh, my dedication is simply your dedication. You take the time to watch the show, and I'm willing to do it as long as I have a voice. All right, let's head over to CNBC where we picked today's story up. Here's what America's top CEOs are saying about a possible recession in 2023. While consumers and companies are currently in good shape that may not last much longer, Diamond said, this is again Jamie Diamond of J.P. Morgan Chase, consumers have $1.5 trillion in excess saving from COVID pandemic stimulus programs and are spending 10% more than they did in 2021. Now, this is kind of an interesting view here because we obviously know consumers are spending more. And why? where is that 10% number coming from? Well, we can tack on inflation plus a little bit more demand. And some of the data says that we're not even meeting inflation demand from before. So, yes, consumers are indeed spending more money. We know that. They have no choice but to do it. But you keep hearing this recurring statement about all this excess savings. And again, we see varying numbers. The $2 trillion number seems to be the closest to what is accurate. And I want to show you where I believe he's pulling this number from. But what he's suggesting here is real simple. Look, we believe consumers have a lot of excess money. They're spending as if they do, but they don't realize that at some point they're going to drain their savings down and they're going to have to stop spending. When that day comes, for companies and everyone else, it's going to be bad news. His prediction is mid next year. So when we look at where this potential excess savings view is coming from, we have here a chart of the overnight reverse repurchase agreements. It's showing about $2.1 trillion. Obviously, uh, Mr. Diamond would be aware of this number, so why he would say one and a half, I don't know where, he again, he gets that number from. But what overnight reverse repurchase agreements are is simply the Fed backstopping money markets. And that's all we're seeing here is the Fed is paying a more competitive rate than money market funds can go out in the T-bill market. Uh, market and get. And so what this appears to be, and what there's not a lot of evidence to suggest this is, that this is just excess savings. Of course, we know that people like to have savings anyways, but the notion that this is above and beyond normal, I'm not so sure about that. But if Diamond's right by mid next year, well, we'll certainly find out. He goes on to say inflation is eroding everything I just said, and the trillion and a half dollars will round sometime mid-year next year. What you're looking out forward is those things may very well derail the economy and cause a mild or hard recession that people worry about. And that's absolutely correct, at least in the sort of terms of the second half, because if you think about it, people are indeed living off of this what perceived excess savings, and they're using that to deal with inflation. Well, when it runs out, what are they naturally going to have to do? And you've got it. They're going to have to cut their spending, and that's going to have a major impact, of course, on company revenues and profits. And of course, inventory levels will then start to go up. And of course, when then what will happen is companies will have to chase prices lower, putting us back into disinflation or even potentially deflationary spiral. So he's got a good point here, at least in the latter half, that if money runs out, well, that usually is a signal that we're going to have at least a minimally a recession, if not something much worse. 
And there's some evidence to suggest that that is absolutely what is going to happen. Here we have the 10-year Treasury minus the three-month Treasury yield. Uh, this is the 10 threes yield curve. And what we can note when we look at this against inflation, the consumer price index in red, when that yield curve is inverted below the black line here and then starts to steepen, it usually signals we're somewhere near peak inflation. And there may be one last push higher and then it comes down. And you can see this in every instant when the yield curve steepens, inflation is indeed coming down. And that means a recession is soon to follow. As far as what's going on with the Fed, well, we know that that usually means we're at peak rates now. We can see that in every instance when the curve is inverted, then the Fed is now at a point where they're looking to stop. So what we, what we didn't cover is that Diamond also mentioned he thinks the Fed gets to 5%. Now we know they're going to meet in, uh, next week, the 13th and 14th, and we have largely to expect a, or maybe the week after, largely expecting a 50 basis point hike. But what we heard from the Bank of Canada today was, hey, we're hiking 50, and now we're probably going to pause. So the probability the Fed gets to pause in the near term future, starting perhaps in January, that probability goes up, which is sensing that something in the economy perhaps just is not right. But Diamond goes on to say this year's geopolitical upheaval, including the war in Ukraine and strained trade with China, are among the storm clouds he's watching. As the dollar strengthens, he notes that international trade for something like oil will continue to get more expensive since weaker currencies are forced to match the difference. And of course, we've been keeping an eye on China and some of these other things. Of course, we know that they're a major factor here. How much they will cause a recession, it's more likely that the lack of demand from U.S. consumers will be the ultimate callous of the recession. <clears throat> When you look out forward, those things may well derail the economy and cause a mild to hard recession that people aren't worried about. It could be a hurricane. We don't know. And again, we don't know where these things start. We just know how they end. And it usually ends with U.S. consumers cutting spending to pay down their debt. We already know today they've got a ton of debt. And we know, at least when their savings dry up, they're going to have less money. So notice there's uncertainty in what Diamond's saying here. Let's go on to the next CEO. This one, CEO Mary Barra. Of General Motors, she says, hey, there's going to be some economic headwinds next year, but it's not sounding the alarms. And maybe the question is, why isn't she doing that? I'm not going to call a recession. That's for economists. But right now, we're seeing a pretty strong consumer. And as well, she should be because there is demand out there for new vehicles. We know due to chip shortages, there are people that want to buy new cars. They want them and they're not available. The question becomes is what happens when that demand also goes away? Even so, the car manufacturers proceed with caution, well, that's interesting, to be prepared for a potential collapse in demand similar to what other industries have seen. Barr said GM is preparing for a fairly conservative 2023 cost-wise to avoid being blindsided, but she is still seeing pent-up demand lingering from the pandemic. So again, you see the same thing. Hey, we think things are pretty good in the short run, but in the next year, well, we're not so convinced. Well, maybe the next CEO has a better outlook. Let's see. Walmart CEO Doug McMillan doesn't want a recession. Well, no one generally does, but he thinks it might be necessary evil to ease inflation for his customers. We've got some customers who are more budget conscious that have been under inflation pressure for months. Should the Fed do what it needs to do, even if it's a much harder landing than we'd like? Well, he says, I think inflation needs to deal, be dealt with, which is notably interesting statement here because Walmart often benefits during periods of high inflation because wealthier consumers start to go down and as they're, they get affected as well, they start to spend down. So the question now is, what is the CEO of Walmart so worried about? Because this could bring in a whole new flux of customers on top of the fact that his existing customers have nowhere really else to go because they're one of the cheapest games in town. Though Walmart is still seeing strong spending, as they should, McMillan has noted more conservative spending in certain categories like electronics and toys. And now we start to get to the real issue of what he's concerned about is, hey, people are going to flock to my stores, but they're going to all buy low margin stuff. They're not going to go buy that high margin things that we need them to when they come into the store. So we have more people. That means it's going to have a greater impact on our staff. It's going to slow our process down. It's going to frustrate people. And still, in the end of the day, we're going to show decent revenue you, but not the profits. And that's not the only issue Walmart facing right now. 
He was on Squawk Box recently and noted that shoplifting rules of cities have been changing, making it hard for police to prosecute criminals. And she asked him, does this matter? And he says it does. If it's not corrected over time, prices will be higher and stores will close. And again, higher prices, not something we expect to hear from Walmart. It's not something consumers want. You start hacking on potential store closures in high crime areas. Again, that's not what you want to see in a booming economy. Again, what we're hearing from Walmart too now, a more uncertainty. And how about United Airlines? CEO Scott Kirby told CNBC his company is entering the year with optimism, as well he should, and might see a mild recession next year induced by the Fed. He sees travel. Of course, we know Kirby does not follow the yield curve. Uh, we know he says business travel is enjoying a steady rebound from his pandemic era collapse. That he said travel demand is plateauing, which might indicate pre-recessionary behavior. And aha, now we're starting to get somewhere, right? Again, we start to see confidence, confidence, and then a bit of uncertainty. And why do we see that uncertainty? It's really, really simple because consumer tastes, consumer incomes are changing. People wanted to travel, but now they're looking forward in the next year and say, hey, you know what? Don't have that kind of money. So all of a sudden he's starting to see demand plateau. Again, a leading indicator here. And even though the industry is in the eighth inning of COVID recovery and still battling problems left over from the pandemic, such as pilot shortage and expensive fuel, and we can note that that will only add to higher airline prices, but something we're seeing perhaps prices go the other direction. And again, an indication of demand that's over to our next CEO, and that is Scott, our CEO Lance Fritz of Union Pacific, saying they've seen a sign consumer spending is tapering off and the economy is tightening. So again, being in the freight business, he sees it first. The housing market has clearly slowed and parcel packaging has clearly slowed and we're seeing that in paper and in partial sh partial shipments. How about Goldman? Well, we know Goldman CEO David Solomon, they're preparing for a possible recession over there. As he says, on Tuesday, he expected stocks in residential real estate to be lower a year from now, and he gave a 35% chance of a soft landing where the Fed can curve inflation without pushing the U.S. into recession. But he said it's very, very reasonable possibility that we can have a recession of some kind. So again, more uncertainty certainty here. So now let's go and take a look at this recent CEO survey and see is what these five CEOs said a lot consistent with what other CEOs are saying. And then we're going to look at and say, okay, wait a minute. Why are they getting so pessimistic about next year? Well, we'll show you why that is. And we haven't seen that just yet. CEO optimism plunges to two-year low as U.S. economy teeters on the brink of a recession. The Business Roundtable said this week that the index plunged 11 points during the fourth quarter to the lowest level in more than two years. And again, when we look at these data points, the key thing is the lowest level in two years. And what is that telling us? The trend of CEO optimism is going down. So they're getting less optimistic. We'll find out why here in a little bit. Still at 73, the index remains above the expansion or contraction threshold of 50, and that matches what we said. They're saying, hey, we're still seeing expansion here, which we're next year, we're concerned about. And you here to see this from CEO Mary Barra, again, of GM. She's a business roundtable chair. With continued supply chain challenges and inflation uncertainty, many CEOs remain cautious about domestic plans and expectations ah, for the next six months. What that is ultimately going to lead to is them you know, reducing hiring, reducing manufacturing, carrying less inventory. So they're getting concerned. Again, you know, we see this over and over again. And sentiment fell across the board as plans for hiring. There we go. Tumbled 17 points. Expectations for sales. There we go. Declined by eight points. And plans for capital investment makes perfect sense. Dropped by seven points over the last quarter as CEOs and prioritize their profit margin. But yet the biggest problem they face are growing labor costs. Remember I told you the Fed didn't want you to get raises? Well, they don't want you to get them either. And an increase in material costs, ongoing supply chain disruptions, and price pressures from the energy sector. Because what's going to happen, and why this is going to be such a year from hell, and what, of course, they can't see, but I'm going to show you in a minute, is very simple. Because they know costs are going up. They know prices are going up. And we know that prices can come down a little bit, but generally inflation remains fairly sticky, broad-based. And now they know wages are going up. And wages, well, you know, they remain fairly sticky, too, because people don't get too excited about taking a wage cut. So if they see demand 
demand falling into next year and they want to keep their profit margins and their stock price up, well, ultimately they're going to have one choice and one choice only, and that's going to be lay people off. And then again, they don't have much other option. They can clear their inventory now, but what's left after that is wages. They're going to look for ways to automate. They almost have no choice. But what's leading the CEO optimism down? What's leading all this uncertainty? Well, I'll show you. The conference board says Americans' confidence dipped in November as inflation expectations jumped. And here we can see in this chart of the conference board's consumer confidence in green against the University of Michigan in red, both surveys. We notice the trend is lower. The conference board is obviously a little off and likely to head down even further to catch up with the University of Michigan. But ultimately, this all comes down to the consumer. When consumer loses confidence, the consumer stops spending because they prioritize paying down their debt because they start getting afraid they're going to lose their job and all of a sudden that means less spending and companies that are ramping up for a big spending spree or are already sitting on large inventories are now going to face a problem in the next year and ultimately are going to have to do the ultimate thing and as we already know it's going to be layoffs and that's why now you can see that 2023 is shaping up to be the year of hell i'm steve van meter thanks for watching thanks for being fans bye now